we will now look at an example where we will have a cyclic prime table. In this example, we have the onset and the offset specified for our uncompletely specified Boolean function. So we have also a don't care set. So let us fill in the first the onset of our function. So we have a one here, we have a one here, and we have a one here. For the offset, we have the offset at the position 0, 2, 8, 10, and 12. And for the rest of the positions, we have our don't care term, so don't care set. So now let us find our prime implicant. So for this one, the prime implicant or the largest rectangular box block that we can find is this block. For this implicant here, the largest block we can find is this block, but it is also this block here because both these blocks cover four either ones or don't care terms. And for the final one here, we have already covered our prime implicant, which is the large rectangular block consisting of eight implicants. And we will name our prime implicants here as A, B and C. And then we make our prime table. So we have the prime implicants A, B and C as rows. And then we have the min terms as columns. So we have 5, 6 and 15 as our columns here. And then we see that A will cover 5 and 6. B will cover 5 and 15 and C will cover 6 and 15. If we now look at our prime table, we can see that there is not much we can do. We have no essential rows, we have no dominated rows that we can remove, and we have no dominating columns that we can remove. So if you want to write our function on minimal form, we can write it as either A or B or we can write it as A or C, or we can also write it as B or C, and all of these are minimal. And in this case, A or B will be x1 prime x2, so this is the prime implicant A, or B, which is written as x4. A or C will be x1 prime x2, and C, which is x2, x3. And B or C we can write as x4 or x2, x3.